Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of AFL Fantasy Head to Head brought to you by AFL Fantasy Fanatics. I'm your host Bales as always and joining me we have another special guest following up from the theme of the series. So you would know this man from Hat Chat. His name's Jake, formerly known as Dunkley's Donuts on Twitter. Jake, mate, how are you going? Hey, it's weird not doing the intro, but I like it. I, I think I might have to learn a few things from you, Bales. No, yeah, thanks for having me, mate. It'd be good to good to have a quick chat tonight about a, a couple of players I know that a lot of guys are talking about. Yes, no, 100%. Um, and we we always discuss uh, that this ruck lineup can be can be a bit tricky. So they're the two players we'll be discussing about tonight. Uh, the two guys are going to be probably R1, R2, a lot of people's pick, but if we could only pick one, who would we be picking? So that's what we're here to discuss today. So Tim English and Ryan Marshall are the two players going head-to-head tonight. So I'll be taking Ryan Marshall and, of course, the Doggies man and Jake will be taking Tim English. So I'll start off with you, Jake. Why should people be selecting Tim English in their sides in AFL Fantasy this season? Look, I mean, uh, the writing's the writing's kind of there for him, I would suggest, after that 2022 season. I mean, we've, we've now got no Steph Martin flag to worry about. We're now looking at a doggy side that is, you know, I mean, they've been around the mark for quite a few years, but there's no doubt that the pedigree is is continuing to be there. No pun intended being our, our sponsor and the dogs, of course. But uh, Timmy English, he just stepped up to the plate last season. We certainly saw the role shift a little bit. He's actually turned into a ruckman rather than just an around-the-ground beast. Uh, but at the same time, what I think is really exciting about 2023 is the Rory Lobb edition because what I saw at uh, open training the other week, uh, Rory Lobb's taking a lot of the, the pinch hitting in the forward line, which means that Tim English can continue to do what we saw him do a lot last year, which is float outside outside 50, and he can kind of be that intercept marker where he finds a way to just rack up rack up a lot of disposals. There's not many Ruckman prior to, say, Brody Grundy, where we saw them get involved in the play as much as Timmy did. Um, he's still going to lack a little bit in the, in the ruck, uh, in, in the hit-outs capacity. I think there's still going to be a few rucks amongst the league that kind of uh, are going to monster him a little bit. But when you consider him uh, uh, priced at uh, just over 900, I believe, and an average of 100, yeah, 102 at, bells. Yeah, priced at 102, uh, 901k. So, yeah, you did just tick over uh, 900k. Yeah, and I think obviously Max Gorn's slightly higher priced, but with a lot of the flag there, I think he's clearly going into this season touted to be number one. There's no doubt with what he did last year. If he replicates that and adds an extra couple of points, that he should be your number one ruck for the season. Yeah, and as you, as you mentioned, I there's not many rucks this year that are going to be just completely solo, taking that bulk share of the rucks. Obviously, we see Gorn and Grundy are together. You've got like, you yeah, you like wits does someone come in and help him? I think he'll be solo though, but he'll be one of the only solo ones. But there are plenty like like Nan Curvis and Soldo, Darcy and Jackson, like Cameron and Cox. Like there's all these Rutman sort of those near the top end that are going to be sharing, and there's not many that have got the scoring pedigree as shown last year by English as well as having that bulk share. So um do you see his role, as you said, playing between the arcs and playing behind the ball a lot more than maybe and how much do you see him maybe pushing forward for a rest? Do you see maybe 10, 15 percent of the game, maybe? Somewhere around there? Honestly, I, I don't really see there's a spot for him to push forward for a rest. I just think it look how tall our forward line is anyway. It almost seems like that's just not possible. I mean, whether Rory Lobb comes in and pinch hits and English plays forward, maybe 10, 15%. But I'm almost going to be suggesting that English is going to be in the ruck when he's on the ground. He will float behind play, as we discussed, between the arcs when he wants that little bit of a rest. Um, he'll rest almost when the ball's in the forward line. Um, and then the rest of the time, he'll have that you know 20% time off ground. Uh, he's pretty stock standard in the ruck department. So... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'll see him forward too much, but he does, he does sneak forward and he'll, he'll kick a snag or two here or there just to boost his score, I've got no doubt. Yeah, yeah, he's he's got that, and he's got that capability as well to, as you said, like a Brody Grundy type to get those marks around the ground and build his score more off of his possessions and just filling the stat lines over getting the hitouts because you don't normally see him have 40 hitouts like a Matt Scorn or a Jared Witts and then build that score off of that. You can see him, he can have a maybe game where he gets 30 hitouts, but he can also have near like 20 plus disposals, get some marks, a couple of tackles, maybe a goal or two and really fill up that stat line. So um, we did see a couple of obviously injuries last year, like obviously the concussion, uh, the post concussion, sorry, delayed concussion. That's what I was trying to think of um, with the Braden Proust hit. Um, and we saw like a bit of a hamstring niggle. 
he has had a couple of niggles every now and again. Do you, how did he look in the preseason? Has he had any niggles going um, in ahead of this season? And should that be a concern for coaches? Uh, look, I mean, there's nothing that has been uh, much word about. He certainly looked in great nick at, uh, at training. I tell you what, he looked really, really good. And he was giving it to Jordan Sweet. And, and Jordan Sweet in the ruck, I, I would say, is a better tack Brockman. He's just got nothing on Timmy English around the ground. And, and the doggies are very clear that that mobile ruck is what they want to run with. Um, so, yeah, no obvious flags. I did say in one of the earlier podcasts to just look out for whenever the GWS matchup is. Because we know that Prusy does do a number on a few, a few rucks around the ground. So... Uh, I think that might be around nine, so maybe maybe keep an eye out for that. But outside of it, not, I think he's in as in as good nick as we've seen. And with Ruckman, I think I think that I want to say because of the the size of their bodies and and the shape, you know, as far as how lanky they are and whatnot, they're probably slightly more prone to injuries. But that's going to be said for everyone on this list, whether that's Roma or anyone from their Ruckmans. Yeah, no, great. And then the only other thing I had for you as well with uh, English is that the price is quite steep. So 901K, obviously priced over 100. When you've got a couple of guys a bit cheaper than him that could potentially be value, like you, as we'll speak about Marshall, but he is value. You've got um, Scott Lysette, who was injured. He potentially could be a little bit of value. Darcy Cameron obviously had the number one ruck role last year. And then potentially even Brody Grundy, even though he's sharing, he is priced at 93. He could go 95 or, or above, so he could be a bit of value. But um, is Tim English priced at 102? Do you see him being value? Do you see him maybe just being a set and forget and just locking the keys away? Or, or how, what do you see um, with his price there? It's a hard one. I don't want to give away my position on this by the time we get to the end. Um, but I would say that the other guys that you mentioned there would arguably be more value. But at the same time, set and forget is a, is, is a kind of something that people go by for a reason. You know, you don't want a lot of trades in your ruck line. Yeah. And I think there is no doubt in my mind that Tim English will probably be R1 or R2 at the end of the year. So he's the kind of guy, like you said, lock the keys away. You don't have to worry about it for the season. It really depends on on your kind of prophecy on how you want to play fantasy. I certainly look at value. I still think he's a little bit underpriced, maybe not as much as the other guys, but you lock it away. You've got no, nothing to worry about, I don't think, with Timmy. Yeah, no, I agree. I think uh, if you're going to set and forget, he's definitely, he has to be the way to go in at least one of those two uh, ruck spots there. Moving on to the other guy, though, Ron oh, Marshall. So we all wanted last year, it's, we don't ever want someone to retire and whatever, because it's obviously when they end their career. But all of us fantasy coaches were just dreaming of the day when Ron Marshall was given that solo ruck role with no Paddy Ryder. So Paddy Ryder retired at the end of last year, which means that the keys have been essentially handed to Ron Marshall. There's obviously rumours about maybe sharing, but we did hear on a news report that he's looking forward to being the solo ruck for the St Kilda Saints this year. And you can see why. He he was solo from essentially, well, from round 15 onwards. I can't exactly remember how many games of those he was solo, but he was solo for the majority of those. But he went from round 15 onwards, he went 131, 107, 102, 89, 108, 163, that massive game against Hawthorne, 118 and 118. To finish the year, then he got that 47 with Tom Campbell coming in. So I'll talk about that flag in a sec. But we have seen that he's been very successful without Paddy Ryder in the side. So this stat here is courtesy of the coaches panel. Um, got it off here. So Ryan Marshall's average with Paddy Ryder is only 78.5. So at that case, he'd be overpriced based on what he's priced at the moment. But without Paddy Ryder, which is what we're going to be looking at, he's pri- he averages 105.3. So again, if you take that into account. He's priced at 91, so that's putting him already maybe 14, 15 points potentially under price. So I see him going over 100 this year, I, and I see probably Tim English going over 100 this year. This is what makes this conversation quite good, is that which one out of the two you're going to pick. So Marshall, he's, he's the cheaper guy as well. Um, he's probably what people say is going to be a top two ruck, so you're getting value there for a guy that's priced as the, let me have a look, two for the fifth best ruckman. So a bit of value there. So, Jake, what are your thoughts with uh, Marshall heading into the season as potentially the solo ruck? Yeah, look, I, I couldn't agree with uh, anything you said anymore, mate. Uh, you're spot on. I think he's certainly 
I would say the most underpriced and, and he's certainly ready to lock up the R2 spot, I would have thought, for the majority of teams. Uh, the upside is real. He's had seven tons in the last nine and, and then one epic failure. And I think that one epic failure is what scares me, just the slightest. Yeah. I think uh, what we said on Hat Chat this week, the end of the discussion there, was if they go into round one and Tom Campbell's on the side, it's still a, it's still a valid pick, it's still a play, because Tom Campbell's not going to play all year. But there's a bit of a flag. If he's named Solo Ruck, you, you almost have to start him, I'd suggest. Yeah, no, I agree. And funny enough, you did mention that, and that's exactly what I was going to get into now. So there is that flag of Tom Campbell uh, in the shadows. So he has had an Achilles problem this preseason, so he is going to be going in underdone if he does, in fact, play round one. So how much of a, like, how nervous are you at the potential fact that maybe Tom Campbell maybe comes in for a couple of games this year or pinch hits? And I, I know they've got, like, a Max Heath as well, but I wouldn't imagine he'll be much trouble if if anything it'd be a better thing for ron marshall if max heath comes in because it means that max he the pro play a lot more forward and maybe pinch hit whereas if tom campbell's in there it might be close to a 50 50 split how nervous is that tom campbell factor tom campbell is the one that kind of scares me the most because in my opinion obviously he used to play for the bulldogs and and i don't actually rate him anywhere but the rock whereas ron marshall's shown that um, he's certainly a, a well accustomed forward and when you look at the injuries to max king and the like jack hayes you kind of go, okay, who is going to play in that in that front six for for the Saints? And I think Rowan Marshall is a better forward than Tom Campbell is, and therefore I would say Tom Campbell should, in that situation, take more ruck time. In saying that, I don't actually rate that Tom Campbell that highly as a footballer, so I certainly hope we see someone like a Heath or Hayes getting himself back together because I think Hayes and Marshall are very similar fits, and that's yeah. actually really going to you know they share the time, but Marshall will have the bulk of it. Yeah, so, well, I think really as long as Tom Campbell doesn't play for the first month and a bit, I think once Jack Hayes is back, ready to go, Jack Hayes, I think, will come into the side, play that more forward role, because we did see he was quite dangerous. I remember that game, round one against Colling, when he kicked three goals and looked really dangerous. So I think that the Marshall-Hayes combo will work really well with Marshall being that number one ruck. So I was pretty, very confident after hearing that on uh, Channel 7, um, that interview he did. I um, can't exactly remember who it was. I don't know if it was with Mitch Cleary or anything like that, but um, he was saying that he's looking forward to that uh, that solo ruck role this year and taking on that challenge. So um, I'm very, very keen to see what Ryan Marshall can do in season 2023. So in saying that, though, we've got to pick one of the two. So both some fantastic options. But, Jake, if you had to only pick one in your side, who would you be picking out of Tim English and Ryan Marshall? Well, uh, I guess I'm in a lucky situation as such that uh, I currently have Scott Light set as my R2, which means that I can only pick one in my side. I'm pretty set on, on Scotty, might I add. Um, but at the current time, it's Ryan Marshall. It started as Ryan Marshall for a week after being at the Doggies training. It did move to Tim English, but I'm back on the Romar train. I just like the idea of the upside. I think Tim will probably hold his price um, there or thereabouts. Uh, and then ideally use someone like a Lysa as a stepping stone to get there. But Roma should be in your side all year, the same as Tim English. So you may as well cash in on the 100K at the start of your season and use that elsewhere to uh, to really boost your starting side. But I think years end, there won't be much between them. And I think Timmy will probably have a higher points out. But we're looking for a little bit of value. Get on Roma. Yeah. Um, it's a tough one for me. Um, I was almost hoping you go English because then I was just going to go Marshall uh, to to, get, to split the ledger. But uh, yeah, yeah, I I might go Tim English just to split the ledger because I think it is fifty fifty. I think it's a flip of the coin. Um, I do like the fact that Marshall is underpriced, whereas English have maybe doesn't have as as much value as you mentioned. He probably still is, could be a little bit of value, but. With Marshall, he is a lot more value, and if as long as Tom Campbell doesn't play, then that's fine. The only, the, I guess, the only reason I'll go English is that English is the number one, no matter what happens. Whereas um, Marshall Campbell could come in at any point. We just don't know. But if, yeah. if someone said, I, I think a bit like uh, Warney, as he said in the last episode, uh, he would pick Oliver, but he'll um, he'll say Andrew Brayshaw. I'm probably the same. I'll say Tim English, but I'll, I'll be picking um, Marshall as well. But in saying I that, think- though, uh, oh yeah, so you go. I was just going to say, I think English has less flags and, and I'd probably say he gets a higher output at the end of the year. So anyone that picks to be English, I don't think you have any question marks about that. But again, in terms of what we at Chat talk about in particular, we, we want value. And I think you probably get five more points in value 
and for that reason i lean that way but in this instance i mean i know i'm sure with some of the episodes i feel really strongly i don't think you can go wrong either way to be perfectly honest yeah i i, I agree yeah i don't think you can go um wrong either way and that's why we're going to ask, uh, who have you got in your team currently, Jake? I think you sort of alluded to it a little bit more before, but who are your current, uh, current ruck set up? So I'm running a Roma R1 Scott Lice set R2, which um, is pretty low ownership at the moment. But uh, I think DC and I are on, on the Lice set train. Uh, same I think, point we already had before. Solo ruck for the year um, certainly has the pedigree to do it again. Um, and as of today, for the first time all season, I've actually snuffed Darcy Cameron into my forward line as well, just as a little bit of flexibility. Um, and the key for all three is all three being solo ruck setups. So um, that's, you know, we'll see what comes out of Collingwood. But um, a flexibility in your ruck line with the carnage we've seen in the past couple of years, that's something I'd, I'd definitely advocate. Yeah, no, it's never a bad thing to be covered in the rucks. As you mentioned, we always cop carnage pretty much no matter what uh, year it is. So... Yeah, I've currently got both. I've got English and Marshall. I, I'm very much like uh, Holmesy, where I like set and forget. I like my two rucks there for the year and preferably don't want to waste any trades in the rucks. But we saw even last year going set and forget. It was the one year that really wasn't good to go set and forget because we saw both both sort of in and out like of our teams and using plenty of trades in the ruck line. So, um, But yeah, I think both are very good picks uh, this year. So um, yeah, I'd be picking both. But uh, if you had to pick one, uh, you can't go wrong with either, I think. Um, but that's another episode done of AFL Fantasy Head Head. So let us know again your thoughts in the comments below who you'd pick out of Tim English and Ryan Marshall if you pick both. Any other questions you guys have, leave them in the comments uh, below and I'll get to those whenever I can. And make sure you send your fa- uh, questions also to AFL Fantasy fans and me and Tim guests will answer those for you. And also tune into our Twitter spaces every Sunday at 4.30 p.m. Perth time and then 7.30 p.m. for all the Eastern States for the AFL Fantasy Finance live Twitter space, which will be available as a, as a podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast shortly after. So thank you very much for jumping on, Jake. What can the uh, listeners and everyone be expecting from uh, you and Hat Chat uh, for the rest of preseason and into the season? Yeah, look, I can't release too many spoilers, of course, but uh, yeah, we'll definitely be producing weekly episodes. They normally come out on a, on a Tuesday, sometimes a Monday, if we get our act together. Uh, you see them every week. You find us at... Uh, yeah, I've almost forgotten. It's clearly a long week here, Bales, but uh, you'll find us at Hatchat AFL. And yeah, yeah, we're reducing weekly content. We've got the Instagram now, also at Hatchat AFL. Um, should be a bit of fun and uh, can't wait for the year to start, to be perfectly honest. And where can the people find you? I did mention formerly Dunkley's Donuts. So will that be Dunkley's Donuts on Twitter much longer? Yeah, it's staying as at Dunkley's Donuts for now. Uh, the Warn Dog might have convinced me. I think uh, the, the year that Big Dunkley's going to have, if I change my name, I, I, I might, I might not feel too good about myself at the end of the year. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. Now go follow Jake and go follow the Hat Chat boys. Well, make sure you get. I don't know if they're still available. Make sure you go get uh, one of the Hat Chat hats. Um, I've ordered myself one, so I'm definitely going to get them the um, good piece of uh, headwear to be wearing um, out and about. So. Definitely go and get one of those. Um, but, yeah, thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning in. Make sure if you did like the video, uh, click the like button. Uh, very much appreciate And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already uh, on our way to reaching 1,000 subscribers. So, as always, as I say, all support towards the – not only here, but A4 Fantasy Finance is always much appreciated. Always appreciate everyone's support. So, um, we'll catch you guys next episode with yet another special guest. So, until then, we're out. Cheers. <laughs>